Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to look at how to use Godot to create a very handy UI component, a selectable choice dialog. But not just any choice dialog. A choice dialog that automatically updates its selectable choices whenever you feed it new strings, and automatically handles button presses and signal input such that all you have to do is connect it to your game with a few lines of code. It's invaluable for RPG dialog trees, visual novels, choose-your-own-adventure text games, recyclable menus, or even clickable item inventories that don't rely on drag and drop. Sound good? Let's get started. This tutorial is compatible with Godot 4.0.3 or higher and may require a bit of tweaking to work with 3.5. First, let's create the UI component itself. With the exception of the VBox container and its child button, you're free to design the layout of the dialog however you want. In this case, I simply started with a panel container and set its transform size and position to something that worked for me. In the case of size, you want it to be as wide as the dialog should be on screen, and as tall as a single choice in the list. The panel container will automatically resize itself to contain its children, so don't stress too much about it. Next, add a margin container and give it some margins. If you don't assign a theme to the dialog, you can simply set them in Theme Overrides Constants Margins. Make sure the layer, container sizing, is set to fill in both the horizontal and vertical directions. Add a VBox container to the margin container, and again, make sure its sizing is set to fill. Finally, add a single button to the VBox. This is going to be the button that defines what our choices look like in the list. Its sizing should also be set to fill in both directions. If you want the button to highlight when the player mouses over it, go under Theme Overrides Styles and add a new Stylebox Flat to the hover option. You can also turn off the Normal button image by changing Normal to Stylebox Empty. Attach a script to the panel container and call it Choices Dialog, or whatever else you find memorable. You may want to save this branch as a scene so you can use it in other projects. First, define a signal called Selected with a single parameter called Index. This is the signal the dialog will fire when the player clicks on one of the choices. Next, grab references to the VBox container and the button you added as its child. We're going to need them when we initialize the dialog. After that, add an array of strings called Choices. This array will hold all the choices that we display to the player. We're also going to be clever and define a setter method for this array, so that when you assign a new list of choices to it, it will automatically update the UI. Simply assign the value to choices, and then call init buttons, which we'll define in a moment. Once you've finished defining your array, we need to hook up the buttons so that it calls our button handler with the correct index. We're going to use the child index of each button we add to the VBox to identify it when it's clicked, and in this case, as the only child of our choices list, its index is zero. Go into the ready function and grab the first child of choices list, which is our button. Connect its pressed signal to the onChoice method. We haven't defined it yet, but we will. And make sure to bind an additional integer argument of zero. Now, when the button is clicked, it'll call onChoice and pass it zero. Okay, we've got a few unknown function errors to fix, so let's define them. We'll fill out onChoice first, because it's the easy one. onChoice is the function that gets called when our buttons get pressed. All we need to do is to hide the dialog and fire the selected signal with the child index of the pressed button. To handle that signal, your game needs to connect a function that takes a single input parameter to it. Now, let's look at init buttons. This function needs to do two things. First, it needs to remove all the existing buttons from the list except for the first one, then loop through all the items in our choices array and create new buttons for every entry beyond the first. We could assign a predefined button scene to the dialog, remove all the buttons, and rebuild the list each time, but this is slightly simpler from an implementation perspective. Feel free to do it the other way if you prefer, and know how. Anyway, we use a while loop to cycle through all the buttons in the list of children attached to the VBox container, and as long as there's more than one, we grab a reference to it, remove it from the list, and then free it. Once we're done doing that, we should just have our original button left. Next, we loop through all the items in our array of strings. If it's the first one, we just assign it to our existing button's label. Otherwise, we create a new button by duplicating the one we already have, add it to the VBox container, set its text equal to the current item in the array, and then connect its press signal to the onChoice function, same as we did in Ready. This time, however, we bind the input value to the index of the button, which is the same as the loop variable that we're using as the index into the array. The reason this works is because, as we add new buttons to the list of children, each one has an index one higher than the previous one which matches the loop variable, counting up to the size of the array exactly. And that's it. Now whenever you want to show the dialog, just set its choices variable to a new array of strings and its visible property to true. In my next video, I'll show you how to leverage this UI element in a choose-your-own-adventure-style interactive story. 
If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more game gems. See you next time.